So my name is Bernhard Sixt. I'm the CEO and chairman of ImmuneID. Um, and uh, in this context, it's worthwhile to note that I have served as uh, CEO of Agendia uh, for the first eight years. Uh, while Agendia was a pioneer in the molecular diagnostic space, ImmuneID is a, a pioneer in the immune molecular diagnostic space. So uh, ImmuneID is a French company. Uh, it's already eight years in existence. We have two products on the market. One is called uh, T-Cell, uh, T uh, Immune Tracker, measuring T-Cell repertoire, and the other one, uh, Immune IG, measuring B-Cell repertoire. Uh, immune Tracker is actually the only clinically available general immune competence test out there uh, because uh, we uh, apply, uh, comply to the highest quality standards available and uh, we have a CE mark. Uh, the tests and the technology is proprietary to us and it's the test kits fit the widely established clinical PCR platforms out there. Uh, the management team has decades of experience in both um, developing of immune uh, companion diagnostics and immune diagnostics and also building a MDX, commercial MDX, uh, worldwide. Um, at the moment, we actually provide our services via our central lab uh, to uh, proven uh, uh, partners and top academic centers like Roche and Sanofi Pasteur and many others. So investing in immunity means actually that you capitalize on eight years of development and uh, uh, investments uh, in quality and regulatory. Uh, we have a lot of people who are interested in using our tests for their purpose. So there's a pipeline of partners standing by to create clinical utility for us. We have a core competence building the commercial MDX company. Uh, we actually benefit really from the timing of the immunotherapies which are coming now up and uh, making this field extremely hot. And we have a strategic appeal already now from uh, all the big players in pharma, clinical laboratories and also diagnostic companies. So what are we trying to achieve? We try actually to build the global immune MDX standard. And as we are a small company with 18 people, we have to focus on three topics first. One is get uh, immune tracker legally into American patients. Two is actually combine immune tracker with the uh, immunotherapy out there, which is Yavoy in metastatic melanoma as immune companion diagnostic. And three is to provide all the uh, eager collaborators actually who want to do something with us with testing in order to allow them to widen the clinical utility and set the immune tracker as a standard for the new therapies and explore also potential uh, the commercialization of the clinical utility we have today. Now a little uh, technology slide. So the immune system, as you know, st the diversity starts at uh, VJ rearrangement level on the genomic uh, uh, DNA. What we do is actually we take 10 ml of blood or tissue or whatever we want to start with and uh, then uh, do a, a qPCR uh, reactions and find the uh, map the uh, VJ rearrangements of which there are theoretically 276 rearrangements. And you can see it's a little map with all these little peaks there and everybody, uh, every peak represents a VJ rearrangement. And the percentage expressed, of course, tells you how competent your immune system is. Now, combining that qualitative information of the immune system with the quantitative, just simple lymphocyte count gives four clinical actionable scores, which we call NDL scores. And I will show you later uh, quickly how they work. And obviously that means you can have low count with low quality, low count with high quality, high count with low quality, and high count with high quality. So why is that also exciting? Because immunotherapies um, do, uh, not, uh, uh, do really promise to be the silver bullet for cancer treatment. And what they do actually is nothing more, nothing less, uh, but to unleash uh, the immune system uh, because some cancers have learned to suppress it and immunotherapies basically reverse the blockage. And then you get an effect. But if there is no competent immune system, obviously unleashing a non-competent immune system doesn't do a lot of good. So you have no effect, but only side effects. And hence, there's a high need to stratify according immune competency. And that's why immune uh, ID comes into play. Here we go already with the first key milestone. So what we want to do ourselves, as I said, 
we want to combine uh, immune tracker as immune companion diagnostic to Yaboy in metastatic melanoma. And we do that with a national-wide uh, clinical trial in France. We are basically in bed with the largest center, which is Lyon. And they organize seven top centers, uh, which gives us access to more than 80% of the patients. And uh, as immune tracker is patient-specific, but disease and drug unspecific, uh, it's very likely that the data will afterwards be broadened to other immunotherapies and other metastatic cancers. Now, the immune system is also important for uh, uh, normal, regular treatment because everybody understands very clearly that a disease can be drug-sensitive or drug-insensitive, but, in, but also a patient can be immune competent or immune incompetent. And in order to get the reaction, you need actually to be both, right? You need to be drug sensitive and immune competent. And that's basically a second dimension a lot of people have forgotten and it dawned over the last 10 years that actually the seed, the identical seed on a different soil will do different things. Uh, we actually have, uh, and no wonder that immune tracker, because being patient specific, but disease and drug <coughs> unspecific, has proven clinical utility according a, a lot of uh, 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 utilities, prognosis, stratification, prediction, treatment, guiding, and treatment monitoring. And this is across diseases that I said, we have publications in breast cancer, metastatic breast cancer, sepsis, HIV, HBV, uh, 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 so, um, uh, stem cell transplantation, T cell lymphoma, and a couple of more. And here comes the other key milestone because all these data have been created by external parties and we just provided the samples uh, or the testing and uh, we were even paid for it. And now we want really to accelerate this and build uh, our uh, product by uh, sponsoring uh, academics and we have a lot of discussions ongoing, you can see there is a list and also sponsoring pharma companies that have specific interest in PD-1, PD-L1 proof of concept studies in metastatic uh, disease. Um, and obviously, as we give priority over uh, fee for service income to IP and commercial rights, uh, we need to sponsor these tests in order to achieve that target. In order to do so, because the music plays in the U.S., we need also to make immune tracker easily available for clinical patients in the U.S. And there we have uh, drawn up a, uh, a, um, a FDA strategy. We want to enter with a class one claim, which doesn't bring us a lot, except that we can legally test. Um, the, uh, 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 the burden is relatively simple because ISO 13485 is basically equivalent to CUP and CLIA accreditation. Uh, and we have done that before. But on the long term, we want to make the uh, Grenoble facility compliant to FDA QSR. And we want also to put our testing capabilities in the US, either via our own laboratory or partners, because that's important for reimbursement. Now, as a summary, actually, overview of the key milestones and timing. So our YAVOI trial uh, is supposed to meet four uh, milestones. Uh, mid of 2016, we will have the final results. Our US regulatory strategy, actually, with the first milestone in 2014, we will be able to measure legally into American patients. But we need another three milestones in order to get to a 510K uh, when it comes uh, to this class two claim. We also uh, expect to close three pharma deals and uh, get results from four academic collaborations. And after these three years, actually, there is uh, the possibility then to fully commercialize. And our options are then either organic growth via IPO or what is uh, actually one of our prime targets as well is trying to exit strategically. And uh, we have learned from the past uh, that uh, it is uh, important to speak to uh, strategic uh, parties already before you start the whole process. And we are quite in deep discussions with blue chip diagnostic and pharma companies. And they really understand what we want to achieve. Now about the market opportunity. So if you look at the Yaboy metastatic melanoma, uh, it's quite a small market uh, because metastatic melanoma is not that big. However, if you uh, ex um, uh, expand the data to metastatic disease, you're already looking at a close to 
three billion dollar market size. Two minutes. Thank you. And if you basically look at all the uh, uh, indications where we have proven already some clinical utility, you come to a staggering eight billion dollar market. And now if we were to succeed to uh, set the uh, standard in uh, immune competence testing, you can envision that in the aging population, you really need a test per year in order to see where the, uh, where the immune system of the aging population is because you can counteract it. And you may have heard about the disease which is called immunosenescence, which means actually the weakening of the immune system over time. And uh, that's exactly the point where when your immune system lets you down, cancers and uh, infectious diseases take up. So you basically, uh, your, your uh, defense goes down and the diseases come up. Um, and that obviously would uh, uh, be an uh, uh, uncapped market opportunity. Now we are looking actually at the B round for 12 million euros. Uh, investment to date is 3.8 million, so you can imagine this is a relatively early stage uh, from the valuation, not from the sophistication of the company. And the major, the lion's share is actually dedicated to the first three projects I was telling about. So 2 million for the regulatory strategy, 1.5 for the Yavoy trial, and roughly 6 million euro for the collaborations. Now to sum up, because I think we are now uh, at the end of the, the uh, presentation, uh, we want now as an experienced management team to transform the company from a fee for service company into a product company. And I think we are optimally set up to do so. And we believe it's a unique opportunity to participate in an early capital race of an established company with momentum and significant potential. And uh, to uh, show you also if you are getting very excited, who to contact, and I hope this will be now the next two minutes on the slide that you can make notes of the telephone numbers. Thank you very much. Perfect. Thank you very much indeed. Where do you fit in the competitive landscape? Who are your threats? I think the market is uh, brand new, so every competitor is welcome. And uh, if there were no competition, there were no market. Of course, there is now everybody tries to do something. And uh, what we see is that new technologies like next-gen sequencing are really trying to gear up and trying to fill positions in the immune uh, testing market uh, uh, where the technology has really benefits. For example, minimum residual disease, you need the high resolution from a next-gen sequencer in order to do that, so that we can't do. But for the general immune testing, I believe that PCR is absolutely perfectly suited and it does the trick, and uh, it has the benefit of being uh, of fitting to the established machinery base. What uh, benefit do you provide to sepsis? Here is actually a slide which shows what uh, happens in sepsis. You have um, here the NDL score, so this is the quantity, this is the quality. You see that most of day one, the people are in box uh, NDL1, which is a bad idea. And if the people are not getting out of uh, the box, uh, uh, then they have a high likelihood to die. So there's a 67% mortality in that group. And people who you get out, either quality-wise or quantity-wise or both, they have a much uh, higher likelihood of uh, 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 survival. So in a way, it's a trade of from to trade and from to they die, or what is it? You can, of course, now just uh, look at uh, other uh, possibilities. So what can you do with an immune depleted patient, right? You can, for example, we have here an example, give interleukin 7, you see that this person has quite an immune system which is totally down, and you see within 10 weeks you get to a normal state. So the good thing is it's not like uh, you have this gene and you're doomed. No, the good thing is you have a problem and we can do something about it.